we're live now. Hi everyone, thanks for coming. You are more than welcome to keep your cameras on, but if you could mute yourselves, that would be greatly appreciated. We'd love to see your face. So if you can keep your camera on, then do so by all means. We're gonna start in just a few minutes, just letting people in from the waiting room and then we'll be good to go. It's really nice to see a lot of familiar faces. I'm glad you think this is super informational and you keep coming back every single day. That's great feedback from my hacking eye. Um, so out of curiosity, those of you who are in the class of 2024, can you use the raise hand feature on Zoom just so we can see how many of you there are? So those of you in first year. Okay, there's just three of you today. Okay, interesting. Four, okay. Er, oh, more raise hands. I have, I'm pretty sure you're graduating this year. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. We're just going to give it two more minutes for anybody who's running a few minutes late, and then we'll start. If you're in the class of 2023, can you raise your hands on the feature? Second year is now. But two, two so far. This is really interesting. Okay, so I'm guessing most of you are third years, 2022s. Can you raise your hands? Okay, we have a lot more 2022s. I'll just raise my hand here. Okay, just because Ahil is here, how many of you are in fourth year? Just for you. Oh, wait, there's actually a lot more 2021s. Okay.
Okay, just a couple more and then we're good to go. So we're going to get started. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming to our fourth day, our last day of the specialization series uh, featuring the marketing, strategic management, and certificate in international management specializations. We're so excited to have four different speakers for you today. Uh, my name is Mahak and I'm going into my third year of the VBA program and I'm your VP Academics VBA for this year. And my name is Mina. I'm in fourth year. I'm your VP Academics IBBA. So just before we uh, head into enrollment details, just a few housekeeping notes. So this slide deck is not going to be distributed, distributed, so please feel free to take notes during the session. However, we are live on YouTube, so you'll be able to reference that video in, in later in the future if you need to. Um, we will have time for questions at the end of the session after we do our panel discussion. There will be a time for Q&A when you can type in your questions in the chat box and either Mina or I will call on you to unmute yourself and ask your question directly to the panelists. Uh, during the session, we do encourage you to keep your cameras on and keep yourself muted. But keep your cameras on so we can all interact with you and see your lovely faces. Um, but this is a public forum, so please be mindful of what you type in the chat, but we do want you to be comfortable enough to ask um, any uh, particular questions that you may have, just please remain that, uh, please ensure that you remain respectful at all times. We're live on YouTube, so just keep that in mind. So enrollment 101, there are a few things that are gonna be different for you this year. We wanted to highlight that as you do go within the next week to enroll in your classes. So the first thing that we wanted to highlight are your course codes. So this year, your course codes are gonna have three titles either online, lecture, or blended. So the only differences between these are whether or not you're learning synchronously or asynchronously. That is whether or not you all have to show up on Zoom at the same time so your prof can talk to you or whether you're kind of going at your own speed. So for online courses, there are no scheduled meeting times. So you go at your own pace, but you are responsible for handing in assignments at the deadline that your prof assigns to you at the beginning of the course. Then there are lecture or blended courses where some or all of the meeting times are scheduled. So you, you will actually see these times on your plot my timetable after you've enrolled. So that's how you know those are the times you need to show up for that plot. And finally, for our third and fourth years, our wait list for the elective courses opens Tuesday, July 14th at 10 a.m. Okay, so for BBA students in year three and four, you must take the following courses, SGMT 3000 and MGMT 4100. You can choose to take MGMT 4100 in your third year, but if you do not do so, you must take it in your fourth year in order to graduate. I've also included a list of the credits of Schulich electives and non-business electives that you must take. A lot of students tend to forget this non-business elective portion and kind of freak out when it comes to fourth year because you do require those in order to graduate. So do not forget, you need 12 credits of non-business electives. There are lots of interesting courses at York for you to choose from. And IBBA students, so it's the same thing, except as usual, your course codes will start with INTL. So you have INTL 3000, INTL 4300. What's different for you is the language study and regionally focused electives. So as you know, you must reach advanced proficiency in your language. And if you have done so before year two or three, you can choose to take those credits in either another language or take another regionally focused course. Um, you do need, however, 12 regionally focused electives in total to graduate. So be wary of that. You would have already taken six in your second year and you can take another six in either year three or four. So what's really important for both BBAs and IBBAs to know is the non-business electives. And here are just some rules that I wanted to highlight for you. 
So if you have finished your second year at Schulich, you would have completed 60 credits. This is provided that you didn't leave any credits behind, you're not lagging in anything. 60 credits is your number. And so if this is you, your electives in year three and four must be 2000 level or higher. That's very important. You cannot take any more 1000 level courses. If you are finished year three, you would have completed 90 credits. And so your non physics selectives must be 3000 level or higher. This is for BBA students. For IBBA students, the good news is you don't have this year level requirement for 12 credits of your non business electives. So if you wanna take voice and speech in your fourth year, you can do so. And that will count towards your non business electives. You should already know this, but just wanted to remind you that year level requirements do not apply to regionally focused courses. So you're good for that aspect. And the good news for both BBA and IBBA students are that the year level requirements don't apply to language courses. So if you're a BBA student who wants to take Spanish 1000 and have that count for your non-business elective in year four, you can do so with no problem. So marketing specialization, as that is the first of many specializations you are here for today, it's very simple. You just have to enroll in at least 12 credits of the following courses. I'm gonna pause for a second to let you screenshot the slide if you need to. Um, just because you won't be getting the slide deck after this. And some of our panelists will be talking about some of these courses as well. So this is your magic list. All of these courses can also be found on the handbook as well. So moving on for strategic management, you must enroll in MGMT 4800, which is management consulting. And then you can enroll in nine credits of any of the following list in order to achieve the specialization. So I'm pause for a second again. And finally, for the SIM, so the Certificate of International Management, the requirements do differ from if you're a BBA student or an IBBA student. And I'm just gonna highlight the differences really quickly. So for BBA students, you do have a couple of required courses that you must take that IBBAs would have already covered in their required curriculum, such as econ and orgs in a more international aspect. And then you must enroll in nine credits of the list of elective courses. And finally, you must either go on exchange or take IBIS 4100, which is work placement in the global context. So the SIM does require some sort of experiential component of international business. For IBBAs, um, the process is a little bit simpler. You have less required courses to take and you only have to enroll in six credits of the following elective courses that's on that list. And your experiential component would have already been completed with your mandatory exchange term. All right, so it's time to meet our panelists for today. So uh, I'm going to get each one of them to introduce themselves, starting with Vaish. Yep. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Vaish. Um, I graduated in 2019, and um, I'm currently at Bell in their uh, graduate leadership program. Um, so it's an 18-month program where we get to do two different rotations within the business. Um, I chose to do a marketing rotation for my first one, where I work as an in-store marketing communication specialist. And yeah, so it's a really cool experience. Obviously, be back, and um, I look forward to answering any questions you guys may have. Thank you, Kia. Let's hear from you. Kia, you muted. That's that's the phrase of 2020, I guess. You're muted. Uh, my name is Kia. I just graduated a couple months ago. Uh, I did a specialization in uh, marketing. I also got a little bit of OMIS in there. Um, I'm currently working with a tech startup called Neuraline as a commercial operations specialist, which makes no real sense in the real world, which is just a fancy way of saying I do all kinds of different things because it's a startup. So I do a little bit of marketing, a little bit of sales, and I'm also leading a uh, portion of the business focused on a secret external project, which I'll talk about later. Wow, a secret project. Okay, and let's hear from Ika. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ika. I graduated the same year as Vaish in 2019. Um, I am currently in between two master's programs. So I'm working at RB this summer as the marketing intern on Lysol. Um, and I look forward to answering your questions about the SIM. 
Lastly, Uday, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey everyone, my name is Uday. Uh, I graduated a few months ago, so class of 2020, and I actually haven't started work yet. I'll be starting in September as a management consulting associate at PwC. So really looking forward to that. And I specialized in strategic management. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into the first question. Um, fairly straightforward, what factors influenced you to choose your specialization? And we are going to start with Vaish for this one. Um, okay, so for me, it was um, as cliche as it sounds like genuine interest. Um, so I really liked the content that I learned in the marketing courses I took um, and a specific professor. So AJ Searcy, um, the person that wrote the textbook, um, really inspired me based off of everything that he taught in class and also his willingness to really stay committed to the content. Um, apart from that, I really enjoyed sort of the career prospects that existed uh, within like a marketing specialization. Um, it seemed really cool because in the space that I'm currently in, you know, I get to work with a lot of new tech, um, a lot of the new sort of network developments that the mass market hasn't really heard of. So I guess for me to sum it up, it would be, you know, the prof and then also the uh, prospects in terms of where I get to work in the industry. Thank you. And can we hear from Ika? Yeah, absolutely. So the reason why I chose to pursue the sim was largely the same reasons why I chose to be an IBBA. Um, it was really that international pull that got to me. Um, having the opportunity to get a certificate on top of the degree that I was getting was a really great add on and a value add in my opinion. And the ability to get a certificate thanks to learning a lot of different courses, that's what appealed to me. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, um, but I didn't want to kind of graduate without some kind of any kind of specialization. So I thought that the sim was a great way to kind of be able to explore different areas, whether that was operations or sustainability or marketing, um, but really kind of come out of it on the other side with something to showcase that I have a really international mindset just on top of my degree as well. Yeah, and what's nice for SIM courses that um, I forgot to mention earlier is that the elective courses, some of them can also be taken online or on exchange if you find the equivalent online on exchange for some this year. But if you do find the equivalent, that can count for that. Um, Uday, can we hear from you? Yeah, so just to refresh, I specialized in strategic management. And I think the biggest reason I did that was I really like seeing the big picture on companies and industries. And I feel strategic management is a great discipline for you to look through that lens and get a larger picture as to like, you know, how the industry comes together and works together and where companies are going over a longer term. There was that. And also I was interested in learning about different industries and I feel strategic management just because of the nature of that, uh, when analyzing a company's strategy, then you really have to learn and look at the industry. And that's also one of the reasons that um, I chose management consulting. So, <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. And finally, Kia. Um, I picked marketing mostly because uh, prior to coming into Schulich, I, I ran my own little small marketing company is what I called it, where I did a lot of promotional materials and whatnot. So um, what that started in my head was the idea of taking something and making it look appealing to others. And that was the way I, I found my path in marketing. It's always been, I look at things from more of a design view when doing anything. So even now when at work, they tell me to run a campaign, I'm like a oh, commercial, like my head just automatically goes to seeing how it would look. And that was the, the best area of business that I found it. And that's why I uh, took the marketing path. Perfect. So we're just going to move on to our next question, which is more about the courses that uh, y'all took as part of your specialization. So we want you to tell us about two courses that you picked and just explain the course overview, highlighting any real life applicable skills that you learn and any tips that you would um, like to provide to everyone listening, either to do well in the course or just any tips overall. So let's start with Ika. All right, awesome. So I'm gonna chat first about the IBIS 4200. So the Integrative International Business Seminar, which is a mouthful, but it's a great course. Um, and the reason why I liked it was because of the real kind of 
international business focused it had in a non-academic way so the way the course ran when i took it was it was very much designed on speaker series and speakers coming in to talk about their stories um, how they got into international business how their careers developed and each week it was someone different so although there was that academic component of understanding how international business worked a great deal of it was actually focused on understanding what a career path looks like and understanding that there is no one real career path in international business. Um, so that's what really I gleaned from that course and it was really insightful from that perspective. Um, I think just a general tip about how to kind of be successful in that course would be to really keep an open mind. Um, I thought I knew what an international business career looked like and I was proven wrong for 12 weeks. Um, so I think the best part is just making sure that that open mind is there. And um, one of the biggest projects you do in that course is coming up with an international business plan for something that doesn't really exist. So my team came up with the idea of having a shipping channel through the Northwest Passage and just kind of coming up with really abstract ideas and making them work and understanding how to put together the different pieces of international business together. Um, that was a really great course for that. And it, it highlighted a lot of the kind of nuanced areas of the industry. Um, the second course that I took that I really appreciated was international marketing. So I apologize to Kia or Vaish if I'm stealing your points. Um, but that was a really great course just because I am also a marketer at heart. Um, and it really allowed me to understand not just the theory behind marketing, but what it looks like on a global scale. So the impact of cultures, the impact of different languages, of nuances, of colors, um, and also be able to really contextualize that um, with the other courses in international business that I was taking. So how does that fit with international strategy or international operations? So that course, in my opinion, was taught well from the perspective of being able to understand marketing in a new lens and with a global lens. Um, I think the best part of that course was kind of the deep dives you were able to take into certain different companies. So we did a deep dive into LVMH um, and we were really able to understand how they work and what their model is globally for marketing. Um, and that really helped me be successful with my internship now because there's a lot of different marketing campaigns that run globally versus locally. And that really helped me understand the different ways in which different regions of the world operate and give insightful comments and ideas based on my experience. So if you're looking for a really global perspective on marketing and understanding how different elements of your international business education fit into a marketing course, that's definitely one that I would recommend for that perspective. Yeah, that's so great that you took a course, which is international marketing, because I mean, you did the same and now you're doing your master's in marketing. So. It's a good intersection of your two passions, I guess. Um, but let's hear from Vaish now. Yeah, so um, for me, I took, I think the two courses that I really liked um, with respect to marketing courses were brand management and um, marketing research. Um, so brand management, first off, um, it was a really unique opportunity because we got to learn firsthand, obviously, all of the theory. And then every single week, sometimes there would be um, like a, a case analysis or like a real life scenario or just straight up learning about what the theory meant in the real world uh, for application based uh, examples. Um, I really enjoyed the part where we got to uh, work on a project where we would look at a existing company that maybe might be lacking in terms of branding opportunities. And so I think we chose like a, a startup or like a, a mom and pop uh, Italian restaurant. And um, we developed like a 12 week um, marketing strategy for them and then like an execution opportunity. So I learned a lot from that because I had just come in from my internship at Bell and learning about what brand management truly meant in the real world. Um, so that's one element that I really enjoyed about that course. And in terms of the actual content, um, a lot of it was taught with real world sort of applications um, in sort of bearing that in mind. Um, and then the second course, marketing research, um, that question really challenged me to think beyond uh, what was expected. So every single uh, sort of assignment that you do or a piece of theory that you learn, it's all rooted again in the real uh, world application. And that course especially helps me now in my current role because um, I work as a marketing communication specialist. So every time you walk into the store from the beginning of the store all the way down to sort of the price card that you see beside the device, it, it was de uh, designed and developed by someone on my team that I'm currently rotating on. So we are often challenged with asking the right questions, ensuring that we have stakeholder buy-in, uh, making sure that what we've done delivers to exactly what they asked for. And oftentimes we've also had to conduct 
um, primary research in terms of finding out what the pain point is uh, from the OEM and what they want to deliver. So marketing research really challenged me in that regard when it came down to asking the right question. Um, but all that being said, I think these two courses were really good in tying the real world, um, whether it was a case-based analysis or whether it was the types of questions that we were discussing in class. Um, that's what I really enjoyed about these two marketing courses and then many of the others as well. It's being able to take the theory and then actually applying it and learning it in sort of a application-based system. So, yeah. Thank you for pointing those two out because I mean, I, I don't think we can say that about all courses that we're actually able to apply in real life. So that's good to hear. And uh, continuing with our marketing uh, courses, let's hear from Tia. Um, I'm gonna go uh, very opposite to you, I should say my favorite two were the sports marketing and the entertainment marketing classes that are completely the opposite of a research-based class. So uh, what I liked most about them was your ability to uh, work on an external project. So um, the sports and marketing class uh, with VJ has a component where you work with a real life sports franchise, sports property, whatever it may be. And you generally work on a sponsorship project, which is a, a big part of what I like to do in, in the real world now. So uh, I, I worked at MLSC and that was a very similar job where we took a, a property and we attached a business to it and try to make money out of it. And that's exactly what VJ's class taught you how to do. It's that sponsorship element of marketing, which is now growing bigger and bigger. So having the ability to work with an external company, in our case, it was the Kansas City Royals, which is a baseball team down in the States. Uh, and we got to work on an external project they had for evaluating the value of their in individual pieces of sponsorship elements. So when they're selling a, you know, a billboard to a customer, how should they value it and why and how is it important? So I got to learn a lot about um, the sponsorship side, which you don't get from any of the other marketing classes at Shoe like at all. Um, and then entertainment marketing, specifically with Marcus Giesler, because he teaches it more of a consumer behavior slash um, market evaluation type of the class where he takes a product and he tries to place it into the market and say how would this you know get reacted to within the entertainment space of course so we looked at sports we looked at fashion we looked at um, esports and we looked at how each of the different uh, markets have very different audiences yet they react very much the same ways and now these are the things that are very applicable to what I do now where I'm looking at different markets and places of the world that I've never been and I and I can understand based on the trends that we're seeing and based on what's popular there, how do we think our product's gonna get reacted to? And, and that was a huge part of that class. And we had an external project again from him where we worked with an esports property to figure out when they launch their team and their brand, how is it gonna get reacted to? How are people gonna uh, you know, evaluate this and understand it? So he specifically dives a lot into that consumer behavior side, which is really interesting. So those were my two for sure. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, now let's shift our focus and go to strategic management and let's hear from Udin. Yeah, so the two classes that I would suggest, the first of them is Entrepreneurship 4700. I have the undergraduate handbook open right here. And uh, I think it's, fi it's called Financing Growing Ventures. And this is sort of an introduction to private equity and venture capital. And I think it's excellent because for those of us who aren't necessarily in finance, uh, those can seem a little bit elusive and uh, you might want to avoid them. But if you're at all interested and especially for the uninitiated, I would say take this course. Uh, it's all case-based. So every week there is a case discussion. There are four assignments, which are all cases. The midterm is a case and for the final year, and it's like a real life case where you're analyzing a real world uh, private equity or venture capital deal. And I think it's really good for learning about those industries, uh, but also looking at the strategy behind how those firms operate. So not just on a deal by deal basis, but seeing how they might uh, fund, how they might deal with their partners or how their fund might be managed or what their strategy is in regards to that. Uh, and uh, I took it with Julian Pepon and I think he was unique in the sense that he brought in a lot of uh, guest speakers. So every other week, I remember we had a guest speaker and they were different fund managers and that was also very, very valuable. 
And of course you do cover a little bit of the financial side as well. Uh, so that's good. And the second course would be strategic management 4750. This is strategic execution. Uh, this is a really good course, I think, because it ties in sort of a little bit of everything from Schulich. So it'll talk about not only strategy, but also the organizational behavior side. So how the firm is organized to execute on their strategy, as well as the financial side in the same sense and like marketing and branding and how they're going to proceed with that. And for me, I think I took this course in my last semester at Schulich and for some reason it was just where all the theory that I'd been learning in strat classes throughout my uh, last two years, but also four years of Schulich, it really just clicked and I'm like, okay, so this is where it all comes together. So that was very enjoyable as well. As for overview, again, there are two cases which you must do. And uh, then there's a final project where, again, you have that real world application. So you're looking at the strategy execution of uh, a real business out there in the world. And uh, yeah, valuable experience. Thank you. Um, so our next question is more about your jobs and your career and how you kind of hope everything will come together in the end. So what career pathway were you hoping to follow with your specialization or, and does it currently relate to what you're doing now? So let's start with Vaish for this one. Cool, so I think the cool opportunity about pursuing a specialization just in general is that, first of all, you're able to capture all of this in, um, knowledge that you're sort of interested in and I think for me in particular, why I chose marketing and then in hopes of becoming like a specialist in the area was um, sort of a leading factor. And then to my earlier point where I really liked being in this space and learning about the new tech and working with a lot of the um, innovations prior to it hitting the consumer market is what I really enjoyed. Um, but then at the same time, I'm also in a program where we get to rotate a bunch of times and try out different things that you wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to do so. So I think the reason why I chose marketing uh, and you know the role that I'm currently in, it sort of worked out perfectly where I get to be an actual marketing specialist. Um, that being said, I don't know if this is what I wanna do for the long, sort of the long term, only because I'm in a rotational program. So I have the opportunity to try something else. So why not? Um, at least I'll know it's not for me or maybe it's something else that I can try. Um, but at the same time, sort of the organization that I'm a part of, they do encourage you to try new things. And a lot of the people that work at Bell or the people that I've spoken to are always more than willing to answer questions, have coffee chats, and there's an open forum for conversation. So for me, with respect to where I want to end up uh, with my marketing specialization, I don't know if I've sort of reached that point yet or where I am in that journey, but um, it's definitely opened a lot of doors in terms of honing in on marketing at Bell or specifically within the telecom field. Thank you. Um, Uday, let's hear from you. Yeah, so um, I work in, or I will be working in management consulting at PwC. Uh, this was pretty much something that um, I really wanted ever since I started at Schulich. So since first year, I knew I wanted to go into management consulting. And I think to some extent uh, in the strategic management specialization, or maybe it's just Schulich culture, you're sort of shoveled into that, that if you want to do strategic management or that's what you're pursuing, then it is consulting. And uh, that too at like the same three or four firms. But <laughs> Regardless, um, I think that it does, the specialization does strongly align with that and relate and through the classes you are able to pick up the skills that you need. Specifically, I would say research and uh, analytic skills. So how to look at different business problems and solve them. And uh, also I would say that do some of the case competitions and uh, the resources that the clubs have at Schulich, uh, they're also extremely helpful and very much applicable to the job. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Ika. Yeah, for sure. So 
that's the interesting part because I'm kind of in an internship because I'm between masters. So you could say I'm pursuing higher education as my career. But um, I genuinely think that the certificate in international management, what I really liked about it was the ability to have that broad scope of courses. So Amina, you alluded to this earlier. I did take quite a few of my specialization courses on exchange. So that included supply chain management, um, sustainability in an international context. So the ability to really understand the courses and see how they're taught differently in different institutions was a great aspect for me. And that's what I continue to search for and look for. My plans going forward generally are to get involved in the international business sphere and the international business space. So right now my internship is focused on marketing um, and it's focused on um, just really making sure that the initiatives and the programs that we get are scalable. So that includes making sure that whatever we have is able to kind of translate across Canada and translate around the world. Um, so the different skills that I learned, whether that is supply chain, whether that is operations, whether that's cultures or languages or marketing, all of those really do come together. So as of right now, I'm definitely using a lot of the skills that I've learned. Um, and I hope to kind of continue in that area and that avenue um, after I finish my second master's. Absolutely, and that's a fair point. And one of the assets of having you here is just to show our students that it's okay to not jump into a full-time job after four years at Schulich. Higher education is definitely a viable option that you can and maybe should consider as well. So with that, let's move on to Kia. Um, yeah, so I think marketing is definitely something I wanted to follow just because it's always kind of been something I've, I've done in my life. Um, so I, I decided to take the marketing classes, but I never kind of limited myself to that because business school is the perfect opportunity for you to learn things that you don't otherwise learn when you're working. So I took almost classes because I'll, I'll never find myself working a supply chain job, but knowing those things makes you so much more valuable for an organization. And also, I took classes in finance because those are the things that make you valuable as a marketer because you know how to expense out your own, own uh, marketing campaign or you know how to budget, you know how to plan. And, you know, I'm stealing everyone's thunder by going into other specializations, but that's the whole point of business school. I almost graduated without a specialization and that was just happened. I like to take four marketing classes. So it's not about being limited to something. It's about picking all the things you want to learn from business school and move on being a more well-rounded, more complete person. So for me, the specialization is only more, more of a stamp of approval for me having done the four classes to make, to make me make sure I learned enough for that field. So I think everyone who's interested in working in any sort of um, realm should take classes in all kinds of areas. So I won't give you a yes or no answer to this question. That's totally fair. Moving on. Great. Uh, so we want to know what is one thing that you wish you had known about the specialization that you were unaware of during undergrad? So if you had any misconceptions when you were taking the courses and that and your courses that you took, they sort of shine light on something that you didn't know about it. Um, so let's start with Udi this time. Yeah, so one thing that I wish I had known about the specialization is that uh, you can do a guided study in strategic management that counts towards your specialization. And I think that's just an amazing experience. And unfortunately, last semester when they actually did it and I was able to get in on it, but they sent out like one email. And also, I didn't know, I found out later on that you can actually approach a professor that you really enjoyed their class. And uh, you can ask and you can request to uh, do a guided study with them. And that's just sort of a one semester long, uh, like strategy project. Uh, that's what it was for the one I did. And it's just a great experience getting to do uh, that kind of research and uh, take such an immersive look at one company or one industry. So I would definitely say that if you're in, uh, especially if you're in your fourth year, uh, to look at that as an option and approach some of the professors you might've had for uh, Strategic Management 3000 and ask if they would be interested in conducting a guided study with you, uh, especially now with uh, the virus and everything 
I think it's it would be a good fit. And one thing, and another thing that I wanted to add is for the industry because, um, yeah, a misconception I had about the industry or something I was unaware. I think something that people are less aware about about the industry is that you know the only job in strategy is management consulting. I think not that many people pay attention to strategic management roles and specializations within companies themselves. So even Bell is an example. So they would have uh, their own, uh, that's vicious territory, sorry, but uh, they would have their own uh, like strategic consultants or internal consultants. And that can be an excellent uh, opportunity as well for people to pursue who maybe have a better idea of where they wanna work or in sports. So, yeah. Since you did mention the whole, let's move on to Varish now. Yeah, so for me, to be quite honest, I don't think there was really a misconception, but similar to what uh, Kia was talking about, um, you know, I sort of stumbled upon a marketing specialization just by chance because I took four courses, but it was, you know, the courses that I really enjoyed. Um, that's why I just sort of ended up with it. And I think one or two other specializations as well. But for me, I think the main thing to keep in mind when you're in first and second year is there's going to be a lot of noise about, oh, are you specializing in this? Are you going to specialize in that? And I think there was like this conception that if you don't specialize in something, it's the end of the world. Um, that's one thing that I realized very quickly. It wasn't in fact true um, because the amount of times that my current manager or my rotation manager, whoever has asked me, oh, what courses did you take in school? I think I can honestly count off like one hand. Um, because they don't really ask about that. Um, so I think one thing to keep in mind when you're approaching specializations are, um, you know, think about what you really enjoy. And to his point, right, sometimes you might end up specializing in something by chance. Um, but other times it might be because, you know, you want to pursue some form of higher education where they require certain prerequisites and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I think the biggest conception that I realized sort of a little earlier and some of my friends did as well was you don't have to always specialize just make sure you're doing it if you genuinely enjoy sort of the courses or whatever content is being conveyed to you and to Uday's point as well um, I technically work as a consultant sometimes because I need to make sure that I'm cross collaborating with our vendors our uh, agencies uh, internal stakeholders and sometimes uh, legal as well. So there's a lot that goes into play, um, irrespective of whatever your role is. So sometimes I have to play um, the role of the finance guy because I need to make sure that we're staying within budget. But how often does that really come up in my role? I'd say it's next to none because we have other people that are more specialized for that. So I think uh, if there's sort of one takeaway that I would give you guys, it's, you know, if you don't specialize, it's not the end of the world. Just do it if you enjoy the stuff that you're uh, learning about. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a really good point. No, in no way are we forcing anybody to specialize. It's just to get a little bit more information about what you can do if you do end up specializing. Um, so now let's hear from Ika about what she thinks about the sim. Yeah. So I think what I also to give context, when I was entering into my sim, it made it went from a transition from being called the Smitty to being called the Sim. So there was already a lot of kind of misunderstanding around what was even part of this requirement. Um, but I think the biggest misconception I had was that the courses were the same every year. So what I mean by that is, and the great part I personally think about it is that each professor kind of adds their own flavor and their own spin, and they have the capability to adjust the courses to what they want, to what the current economic situation is, to what the world is doing, and most importantly, to what the students want. And I think that that's what I really appreciated about the SIM. Um, many of the required courses there are very much changing on a year to year basis based on um, kind of who the professor is and what's going on. And I really appreciated that aspect of it, which was a kind of pleasant surprise, um, just because it allowed me to 
make sure that whatever I was learning was actually current and it was what the class wanted. Um, the beauty of the sim is that usually the class sizes are very small. Um, I think in my year there was maybe seven or eight of us who was in one of the courses towards the end. Um, and we really had control over that class. We could kind of talk about what topics we wanted to talk about, what speakers we wanted to get in, what kind of content we wanted, where we wanted to go deeper, where we were kind of bored and wanted to move on. And I think that that was a really refreshing perspective. I went into it thinking that, okay, the professor is just going to teach whatever and that's it. But you do have a lot more autonomy um, in that kind of area and that specialization. And especially in upper year, the professors really want to teach you what you want to learn. That's what they're there for. Um, so I think that was a really great um, and refreshing perspective that I was not aware of when I kind of got into that. Yeah. Thanks, Nika. And now let's move on to Kia. Um, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit about a closed eye view that you kind of get locked into by only sticking to the material you get about a school of courses because the classes are focused a lot around brand management and a lot around um, brand. There's not a lot of what else is there that happens in marketing because marketing is so, so much more than that. Um, what I'm doing right now at a startup, I really get to see all of it. So that's what really opened my eyes to uh, understand it wasn't just what I learned. There's a huge agency side that plays into marketing. And for those who don't know, agency is design, it's production, it's it's how to make your marketing come to life. It's how to do an activation and those things that you just don't hear about at Shulik. So I wouldn't call it a misconception, but I would say that once you're kind of working through your classes, you should always open your lens to everything else that exists in the real world, because there's lots and lots of opportunity to get involved in marketing in different ways, um, especially around a product. It's not always about the brand. It's, it's a lot of times when you're launching a new product and you're developing a product, there's so much marketing that goes into it. Right now, my company is working on a virtual reality goggle that helps with the diagnosis of concussions right and you would think that this product would just get launched into the market and everyone's going to want it but no there's a lot of things that go into understanding how the product is you know conceived in the world and that's something that doesn't exist within your classes so i'd say once you're learning the marketing think about how to how else to apply your knowledge that's that's my take on that Thank you. Um, so our next question is more catered towards your recruitment process for your specific role right now. Um, so Uday, can you just walk us through what the PwC recruitment was like? Yeah, so my recruitment was uh, a little bit different from what the, from maybe external recruitment because I did uh, I applied for the role internally. Last summer I worked uh, in an accounting capacity at PwC and I was fortunate enough to have this chance to apply. But essentially it will look like this to anyone applying. So you'll send in your resume and uh, you'll have to do a virtual interview which is something PwC has across all their service lines. And that's like a virtual cover letter. So it's pre-recorded. you'll uh, the prompt pops up on screen and you have 90 seconds to answer a question. I believe it for the 2024s, uh, you would have done this when coming into Shulik quite recently. And after that, the interview process, there is one behavioral interview and then there is a group case interview. PwC is a little bit unique uh, amongst consulting firms in that there is a group case. Other consulting firms usually have a one-on-one -on -one case where you sit with an interviewer and they give you a case and you have to walk them through uh, your solution. So for PwC, everything happens on the same day. It's just that round. And then uh, they call you with an offer, hopefully. Thank you. And uh, Vaish, what was the Bell recruitment process like for you? Okay, cool. Um, so Bell, uh, is a little different now. So, I mean, come September, our recruitment process is going to be a little unique because we're not obviously going to be on campus. Um, if we do show up, I'm sure we're going to be one of the very few people on campus. Um, but my experience is a little unique in that um, I actually went through the Bell uh, internship uh, when I was going into fourth year. So I can speak to that and then also my full-time recruitment. So um, applying to the internship 
uh, started, I believe, in September. Um, and a couple of weeks in, Bell was on campus. We had like an info session. And for those people that attended the info session, um, there was a unique link um, that you could go to submit your application to or like an uh, sort of like a submission of intent. Um, from that, they will either send you, uh, they'll send you like a invitation link to complete an online video interview, similar to the way that I think Shulik still has it now where you'll be entering, uh, sorry, answering a bunch of questions. Um, and then following that, if you're successful, you'll get a invitation for an in-person interview. I'm assuming that's going to be a little different next year where it'll probably be virtual. Um, so the scope of that uh, in-person or video interview is basically a three-hour case-based um, interview. So it's going to be a little bit of that case analysis and then um, the last sort of uh, hour is split between a 45-minute um, interview that will mix between a behavioral as well as sort of tell me a bit about yourself and present the case at the same time. Um, once you get through that, you know, uh, you either get an acceptance or try back next time kind of thing, like a pat on the back. Um, I was lucky and I didn't get the pat on the back. So I joined as an intern um, in summer of 2018. Uh, the internship was uh, three months long, so about 12 weeks. Um, the breadth of the internship was basically at the time a case-based um, sort of uh, presentation where we would spend some time in the call center. Now it's the e-chats that we have. And then you have a project based around sort of your experience in the chats or taking calls. Now what they've done is there's actually two case-based presentations, one based off of your, um, your each chat experience and then another one that's more specific to the actual business. Um, and then at the end of the summer, again, you either get an offer to join back September following graduation or the sort of the pat on the back saying, thanks for you know, coming out. Um, we appreciate your time kind of thing. Um, so that's sort of my journey. Uh, so this was really cool because I went into fourth year knowing I had a job waiting for me. And um, it was a really cool experience that way. Now, for some of the people that didn't do the internship, the alternative would be come, I think it's late August, early September. Again, we're back on campus, um, recruiting people for our full time program. And that process in a nutshell is very much the same. You'll get an invite link, you'll apply online, um, you'll do your in-person interview, and then you'll either get the, the offer or the latter. And um, the people that do end up being successful in that round will basically do um, a version of the internship as well um, in the three months leading to September uh, following graduation. So again, you'll do the internship basically this time again. And the point of that is so that everyone, both the intern class as well as the uh, incoming grads are all on the same level um, in that you have a bit of experience about sort of what happens in the call center um, and then what happens in the rest of the business. And that way it's pretty unique as well. So long story short, everyone starts together in September where we have traditionally done one month um, in our retail location. Again, I'd imagine going forward that is going to be a little different this time around. Um, but the recruitment strategy is essentially getting um, different types of talent in a program where you know, you're challenged to take on marketing, sometimes BI, and there are other um, streams. So I think there's about nine streams within Bell's graduate leadership program. So, you know, someone that's more interested in finance or someone that's more interested in Bell Media, those are all opportunities, but it's basically the same sort of recruitment process throughout. Awesome, thank you. And Ika, in my opinion, you're working for one of the most relevant companies um, right now. I have not been able to buy any Lysol products since I came back from exchange. They're sold out everywhere. What was your RB uh, recruitment process like? Yeah, absolutely. So my process was very um, interesting, I guess you could say. Um, I did have another internship lined up earlier um, in the year, but obviously with the pandemic, unfortunately, that was uh, rescinded. So I was sitting in my apartment in Kingston at the beginning of May and being, what am I doing this summer? Um, so, and this kind of story ties into the area of networking, which I think Vaish and Uday kind of alluded to earlier, but I 
the, I really want to underscore with the story the value of connections, even though you don't necessarily know when they're going to come in handy. Um, in November, there was a networking event um, as part of my master's program. I had a conversation with someone. Um, six months later, she's messaging me, hey, have you seen this internship on LinkedIn? And it was the internship that I have right now. So, you know, it, I think that that's a really kind of just underscored point that I never really appreciated before that sometimes you can make a really good impression on someone and they can recommend you for a position. Um, and then that's kind of how I started and I finally got aware of that. Um, the actual process involved a phone interview. So I submitted my resume um, through someone who I networked with on LinkedIn. So it was kind of like one of those sliding into the DMs kind of um, connections. Um, and then after that, I had my phone interview, um, which just talked a little bit about behavioral, why I was interested in the role, what I knew about the company, those kind of general questions. Um, and then the next week I had a case. So they sent me a case. I had an hour to work on it um, and then I had to send it back to them. And then the following morning I had an interview um, where I talked about the case, what kind of results I came up with and a little bit more technical and behavioral questions there as well. Um, and then after that, probably a two, two days later, I got, I got the offer. So um, I think what I highlight from that was that it is really a two-way street, especially at RB. Um, they're really focused on making sure that it's a right fit um, because when I was going through the process, there was two options, either working on Lysol or on finish. Um, and between the interns that were there, they were really focused on making sure that the person who's being hired for the job is right for the brand. Um, and I think that that's also something to bear in mind in a, in a recruitment process. Like if it's meant to be, it will be. And if it doesn't work out, then there's probably a good reason why. Um, and it doesn't mean anything to do with your skills. It might just be that your passions might not line up with the certain product or the certain business or the certain uh, something else. And that's not a reason to be hard on yourself. Um, the right opportunities do come along. Um, and when you find the right fit and the company sees the right fit, then you have a great time with your internship or your full-time role, I'm sure. Um, so that's just also something to bear in mind kind of going forward. Thank you for that. And I'm sure a lot of people will have questions about recruitment um, in a bit when we get there. And just because you're a very, very diverse group today. So let's move on to the next question. All right. Um, so what is one unique reward that you've experienced with your specialization compared to any others, which it might be at your job or just in your life, if you've experienced that you have some sort of like different advantage compared to other people. Um, so let's start with Kia this time. I couldn't find the, the mute button, sorry. Um, I would say um, the biggest thing was for me, the experience with the sports class. Um, it's strange because I, I didn't think I'd be able to get the job I did uh, right that summer after the sports class, but MLSC is a company that I want, always wanted to work at. And it was almost like a dream job for me at the time. And I ended up working there during the championship year. So it was like the perfect time for Shulik to offer this class and for me to get the experience to be able to get it. So um, working on a real life uh, consulting project for a marketing uh, sponsorship job um, provided me the perfect lens to be able to compete for the MLSC case competition, which then got me my job. So I feel like the experience of knowing how to do sponsorship marketing just elevates you beyond all the kids from all the other schools that don't have this course offered and they don't have VJ. So VJ actually opens that door to, you know, all these different companies who come and join his class. And as much as it's, it's different, it's, it's, it's the biggest reward for me. I think it's just, it's not a traditional answer for an academic thing for specialization, but just the piece of a project like that can really just push you above and beyond other competitors when you're applying for jobs. So I remember you were working with MLSC at like the best time to work for MLSC when the whole Raptors hype was in. Um, do you want to talk about your your recruitment process a little bit more about MLSC and then what you currently are doing now? Just yeah. Um, so um, yeah, I got skipped last question. I get called back here, right? Um, so in terms of MLSC, they have a really really cool uh, process, which is you have to compete in their case competition to be one of two paid interns um, 
that they hire every year. So MLSC only ever hires two people every year to work um, for that program. So and how that works is it's a case competition that's centered around a creation of a sponsorship. So you work with a fake brand and one of MLSC's teams. So the Raptors, the Leafs, the TFC or Argos. Um, you have to create a connection between the two and, and show uh, MLSC employees what it means to, to be able to do sponsorship marketing, essentially. Like, well, how do you do an activation? How do you do campaigning? How do you create brand messaging that's relevant? And all that put together with uh, four of your best friends and you get to compete at the uh, MLSC like, headquarters, which is directly in Scotiabank Arena. It's probably the coolest experience you'll ever get to go through. So if whoever is in third year now should definitely compete in this competition. Even if you don't want to do marketing, this is the coolest experience. Um, from there, they kind of pull you aside and they give you a little wink like you're getting an interview email. And once you receive that, um, you're called in and you get to go have a conversation with the coolest people in the middle of the arena. So they have offices right around the court. So they kind of lure you in with that as well. And then if you're lucky, the Monday after that Friday, they shoot you an email to come and join them for the summer. So that was uh, MLSC and that was a, a really standardized recruitment process. But then it came to my current job, which is the most untraditional thing that's ever happened where um, I got kind of scouted on LinkedIn. I got a message and I, I was very sketched out, thought it was never going to be real. And I kind of followed it, the lead through and I got invited to go have a drink at the Fairmont. So you're like, okay, interesting. This is an interview. Is it a date? You don't know what's going on. And then you, uh, you show up to the Fairmont and they, they get you drunk and they tell you about their company. So that was my uh, recruitment process for this current startup because it's a team of 17 people. So there's, there's not a lot of people there to have a process really put into place. They had a couple of conversations, then they had another phone call with me to make sure that my uh, interests aligned with the role that they had, and then they, they gave me the job. So two very opposite looking uh, processes. I think that's the most fun recruitment process I've ever heard about. Like these past few days, we've been talking about, we've been talking about recruitment processes that have gone like two months, the span of two months. Yep. That's just so fun. But um, continuing on the marketing stream, uh, Vish, do you want to tell us a little bit about any specific advantages that you have with your specialization? Sure, yeah. So I think in my current role, it's pretty unique in that I get to do a little bit more than just marketing um, because I'm asking those questions and I'm working with vendors and I'm dealing with a lot of different people and wearing multiple hats. So I think um, the courses that I took specifically at Schulich and then while I was on exchange, really gave me that mindset of being okay with, you know, challenging the, um, the task at hand and making sure that I'm taking it a step beyond. Um, so I think in terms of doing my marketing specialization, one, I guess, reward was um, being open to, uh, you know, taking on more challenging tasks. I don't think that's an actual reward in this, but I don't really know how to answer this question, but I'm just going to say it like that. Like, you know, it's, a way of really challenging yourself that I took away from being in marketing, learning that type of content. And um, it's what really my current my um, one word I could say is it put me ahead in terms of dealing with the case interview uh, when I first interviewed at Bell because I had no prior experience. I mean, literally beginning of third year, I'm coming based off of all the theory that we've learned um, in first and second year. So not at that much of a competitive point. So I think um, doing the marketing specialization to an extent did prepare me that way. Um, and yeah, so it, it helps in that regard. Thank you. Uh, Uday, do you wanna go next? So I would say maybe a unique reward that I experienced with my specialization is the fact that um, and I guess with my job as well, consulting is that the nature of it is that you do, you're not tied to any one business. So you're not just working in telecom or CPG, no offense guys, but <laughs> you uh, get the chance to experience a new industry and a new client every time. And that has always been something really, really important to me because I feel I get bored and distracted easily. So the opportunity to, you know, sort of have like a brand new job, every new project you're on. So every few months, that's just really, really exciting. And I guess unique uh, reward or experience within the specialization specifically, I would say it was that 
uh, independent study on strategy. It was just such a great project. And um, uh, it, I started it, it was, I started it a month early thinking that I'd finish in a week, but it ended up taking up until the deadline, plus like a one week extension, which the professor provided everyone. And uh, I wrote 80 pages of a uh, of paper and it was actually the first and only A plus I got at this school. So um, definitely uh, if I haven't said it enough, I would recommend if you're in fourth year, do an independent study. And that's just an amazing experience, I think, in any specialization, but especially strategy. Perfect. Ika, do you want to uh, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the sim? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I'm going to hit three points here. So the first lovely thing that you get is an extra piece of paper on top of your actual degree. So if you're someone who likes paper, this is a great option to get it um, in terms of I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but class size, the sim group is probably the most tight knit group that you would get because there's so many courses that you see each other in and you really have to work together and you're kind of working with the same people across the years and across the classes. And I have the unique benefit of that too. So you really do know that there's people that you're friends with for life, um, which I mean is not untrue for the rest of Schulich, but I really do like that. Um, and I think the last kind of big unique reward that I got was the fact that it really challenged the way that I looked at the world and the way that I looked at any one business situation. The beauty of it is that because you're taking so many different types of courses and there is that kind of overlap between certain concepts, for example, you'll touch on supply chain and marketing and marketing and supply chain and you see how the two really do interact. Um, I think that that aspect was very uh, unique so that when you're in an interview setting or when you're looking at a project or you're looking at a client, you're able to say, okay, I'm going to recommend this, but that also will lead to this and then that leads to this and that leads to this. So just bear that in mind. And I think that that really puts you above other people in terms of looking for a job or really being able to provide a high quality solution for someone, just because it means that you're able to kind of give them not just something that's theoretical, but something tangible and that they can really work off of and go off of. Um, and I think that that was a really unique perspective from the sim that I was able to gather from that. Okay, so this is a really popular question that we had from a lot of students. So apart from the courses required for your specialization, did you find any electives, whether at Schulich or at York, that A, helped further your education or B, you just enjoyed taking? So let's start with Vaish for this one. Like one, I had the opportunity to go on exchange and I took everything and anything I could uh, two reasons. One, um, it was really interesting and learning, uh, I think sort of similar to what Ika was saying, uh, her version of, you know, the sim was basically what I did on exchange, except I didn't get the extra piece of paper. Um, I, yeah, so, you know, it was a little interesting that way, uh, um, taking the courses that I did take. I was on exchange because I'm an international perspective. They're taught by people that actually work in the industry. So it's really um, a unique perspective that way because I'm getting a real sort of real world experience that way. Um, and then in terms of the courses that I took at Schulich outside of my marketing courses, I ended up taking a lot of org courses because they were really interesting and gave me um, that unique sort of skill set that I had um, now sort of working with other parts of the organization managing stakeholder interest and ensuring that I'm able to cross collaborate. Um, apart from that, one regret, I, I think being full transparent, um, one regret I do have is not taking a lot of finance courses, um, sort of that the GPA knocking at my door was basically like, are you sure you want to do this? So that's why I didn't end up taking a lot of the finance courses because I'm interested in it. But just because you're interested in something doesn't always mean that you'll get the right mark for it. So I think that's one regret I did have, not taking a lot of finance courses. Um, but yeah, like in terms of courses outside of Schulich, um, I did take a couple of York electives that were, I think, communications-based courses. And those definitely me to step outside of my comfort zone, whether it was just conversationally or portraying um, like uh, certain uh, mannerisms while talking. Um, those types of courses were interesting. Um, and I don't know if this I'm 
feel like because every single person took it. Um, but it was just a course that really opened my mind and I couldn't believe that such a course was offered at York and I got uh, six credits out of it. So just a unique perspective to end things off on that regard. Thank you. Let's hear from Kia next. Um, I think my favorite course, I'll say, uh, the whole time at Schulich was the required course for fourth year, which is the business simulation class. But outside of that, um, there, my uh, favorite course, which is outside of my specialization, was the VBA course. You have to help me with the course code. 30 some almost 30 six to seven yeah, I don't know some some almost class it's it's a it's a VBA based class that teaches you how to use excel beyond the buttons that are on your screen so uh what that really taught me was um how to automate automate things for my, my myself when uh, setting excel sheets up and working at a startup that turned out to be a lot more valuable than I ever thought it would be because no one has any sort of process in place no one knows how things are supposed to get passed from one place to another so I started YouTubing VBA code and based on the knowledge that I had, I was able to use the program to really set up new process flow for things that didn't have any sort of automation behind it. So we set up how to, you know, an order flow, you know, how you get from your Domino's pizza, where you see where the pizza is at all times. We set up something like that using VBA for when our product was actually sent to a customer so that it would automatically email everybody. It would automatically email the internal teams, the external receivers. So we it's something that you never think you learn out of a business school and you'll, you learn how to code with Excel. So it's pretty cool. Thank you. Let's hear from Ika. For sure. Um, I think the one course that I really appreciated taking that was not part of my specialization was project management. I think it's management 4,700. Um, I really like that course just because it, puts a lot of structure into how projects are done. And although each company does their projects differently and they manage things differently, the general framework is really great. And the lingo that you learn is translatable to every industry you go into, no matter what. Um, and I think that from a marketer's perspective, it was really great to understand how you define certain things. You have to work with certain stakeholders and really kind of bring a project to life and then how it all closes. And I think running through that process was really helpful for me, at least to understand that it's not just all up in the air. There is some structure to a lot of the different initiatives and projects that have to get done. Um, and that was really great for understanding that and it's applicable really everywhere we go. Um, electives that I took outside, I took a art history course, which to me, when I first took it, I had no idea what was going on in there. Um, but over the course of the semester, I really appreciated it just because it gave me a different perspective on cultures than you get in the business classroom. In a business classroom, they're very, this is how it impacts business. This is the bottom line impact. This is the marketing impact, yada, yada, yada. I think that that course and for the IBBAs out there, it's really a great way to leverage your regionally focused courses that really deep dive into a culture in a different lens. So I was looking at the way that art influenced Japanese culture and the way that, you know, certain different elements and later impact the way that they do business um, from like a different marketing class, right? So you really start seeing those threads come together. Um, and so I would encourage kind of, if you're just like, oh, I'm not really sure what elective to take, take something that would kind of, doesn't seem really related, but will eventually come together. Um, you'll be surprised how things come together um, throughout your education and how things fit together. And I think that, not being um, kind of apprehensive about taking that leap to try something new is definitely something that I would recommend um, to kind of get into for sure. And last but not least, Uday. Yeah, so I, I think one of the most valuable courses outside my specialization was sports marketing. And Kia has spoken about this to some length, but uh, I definitely second every single thing he said, like VJ is such a passionate prof. He works in the industry and uh, you can tell that he really wants his students to learn what's going on. He's always willing to spend extra time with you. He makes himself available outside of class. The consulting project that you get to do, it is for a real world sports property and that is not an experience a lot of people get even in the early stages of their career, let alone in undergrad. And even the exams and uh, the uh, yeah the midterm and the final it gives you real world uh, questions about problems and sports and then the other part of it is tourism marketing which also is very very interesting if you are into that and I think it's a course very firmly rooted in the real world and practice and 
practicality. And so I really enjoyed that. Another Schulich course, and this is one that isn't maybe so heavy of a workload, is management for nonprofits. And I took this course just because my friends were taking it, but uh, it was a really enjoyable experience. I think because at Schulich, a lot of people may not consider nonprofits as a viable career option. And because of that, they may not know how they work, but it's excellent for learning and introducing yourself to that. And one uh, elective outside of Schulich was uh, public policy and governance. That's every bit the adrenaline rush it sounds like. But this is a really excellent course, I think, because everybody talks about politics or it's all over the news and everybody is into that. But public policy really talks about the nuts and bolts and behind how our government system works and maybe why certain policy ideas. So now we have things going now a very popular policy idea is, for example, defund the police. So it really helps you think about how that might come to be, what it actually means, and you know how you can accomplish those goals. So absolutely excellent experience. Thank you for being so thorough, all four of you. And now it is time to open up the floor to q and If you do have a question, just put it in the chat or you know, type, I have a question and we'll call on you, you can unmute yourself. Um, but yeah, please, everyone, not all at once. We'll just sit here and wait for some questions. Okay, so our audience seems to be a little shy. Okay, I will start by asking a question. And um, for those of you that want to see the chat, you just have to click on participants and the chat bubble usually pops up. It really depends on if you're full screened or if you're not full screen, but you also get little notifications as the chat is going on as well. Okay, so my question is for Ika. Did you have a marketing specialization or because you're doing a marketing role now but you didn't really talk too much about like the courses you took as opposed to Vaishan Kia so what did you leverage to get into the marketing position that you're in? Yeah absolutely so for full transparency I triple specialized. Um, I specialized in marketing, responsible business, and international business. So I, and that kind of is also another reason why I really like the sim because you could double dip off whole lot of those courses into other specializations. So um, that's just another tidbit if that's something that interests you. Um, I got kind of into that internship largely because of the analytical thinking that I was able to showcase to a recruiter. Um, I think that a lot of people have uh, a notion that marketing is all creativity, which is, of course, wonderful, but it's a lot more numbers than a lot of people realize. There's a great deal of number crunching. You have to really know your Excel. You have to know how to pull data, how to leverage huge amounts of data, things like that. Um, and I think that being able to highlight the balance of creativity with analytics, um, that's something that helped me stand out and really uh, hit home that I understand a little bit more about the industry um, than kind of that surface level uh, perception a lot of people have. So I think that being able to leverage that was great. Um, and I guess that's where the breadth of courses really did come in to help me as well. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so it looks like Kate has raised her hand. Kate, can you unmute yourself and then you can go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, I'm um, sorry, I joined a little bit late, but um, I have a question about like um, OMIS courses. So I know that um, a lot of them require coding and whatnot. So do you think considering that we're going to take our courses online, this coming fall term, like, do you think that will affect how we learn the coding? Like, how do you think, or to make it this more general, how do you think our um, like ability to learn those types of things will be affected if it's online? I know it's like kind of vague, but just like based off of your personal knowledge, like how was it learning in person and stuff like that? Yeah. I'm gonna jump in real quick. Um, there's absolutely nothing gonna, nothing that's going to stop you from being in an online class to learn the coding. If anything, it's going to help you. 
um, the portion of the class that you need to learn yourself for the VBA class, at least, is going to take a lot of YouTubing, a lot of Googling, and that's 90% of your learning because what you learn in class is one example of what's being taught to you versus the general understanding of how to do that task. And that's really important to learning VBA. But then again, the OMIS classes are not all coding. There's maybe only two or three of them that are heavily based on coding, which VBA really shouldn't be considered, I would say. But um, I would say like, being at home will give you more chance to watch YouTube videos on your assignments and collaborate with your classmates to figure out the problem. So I think it's even an advantage in this case. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can jump in on that. I took, uh, I didn't take the VBA class, but I took two of the other uh, coding classes. So one is OMIS 4100, and that is Python. And uh, the other is uh, actually Econ 4210, which is R. And yeah, I would agree. I think that definitely there are a lot of resources available online uh, via YouTube. I remember for R, I think a lot of individuals, and I don't necessarily condone this, but they opted to... Uh, not attend the classes and just figure it out on their own. And uh, to quite a degree, they were successful. Um, and I think with the OMIS class, the struggle was not so much coding. I think that's something a lot of people would think it's daunting. It was actually the OMIS itself. So the mathematics behind it. And for that, the professor was helpful. But I think even if it's online, your professor will be willing to sit down with you, talk. Usually Schulich professors are really, really good in that sense, that they're willing to uh, spend time, they're willing to dedicate time outside of class to help you out. So I don't think it should be like too hard. I think it's still a good option. Thank you. And I guess this next question by Fiddy is more directed towards, well, Ika, Vaish, and Kia, whoever wants to jump in. Fiddy, do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? Yeah, sure. I was just wondering, um, other than like the brand managing and like analysis aspect of marketing, what other fields are there? I can start off. Um, so I think one cool thing that Kia talked about was agency side. Um, that's, again, one thing that I had next to no exposure while I was at Schulich. Not to say it's a bad thing, but I mean, to, again, to his point, it sort of honed in on this is what marketing is. And I think that's the biggest lesson that you get uh, your first day on the job or sort of your first week on the job. You learn that there's a whole lot uh, more than what you learned at school. Um, I don't really know if I can speak to sort of what other fields are in marketing, but I think one cool thing about having a marketing background is you're able to support many aspects of the business wearing various hats. So again, in my role, like, yes, I'm a marketing and communication specialist, but I'm literally conveying, for instance, the specs of a product on layman's terms that you can, as a consumer, understand. So I think to an extent, I'm also a writer. And then I also have to create content that we can put on our digital platforms. So you got to be able to be sort of open and willing to wear as many hats as they need you to, because as a marketing uh, or a marketer, rather, I should say, um, at its core, you need to understand what your customer um, wants or needs and what your sort of core value proposition is. So I think it's having a better understanding of what exactly is the value that you want to portray. Uh... Okay, does anyone else want to... Thing. I'll, yeah. I'll jump in for a second as well. Um, on top of the agency side, there's also a lot of uh, little things in marketing that you don't notice, like sponsorship. Sponsorship is such a huge, vast area that is filled with tons and tons of employees and all sorts of companies. Um, if you look at it, it's, it's happening more and more now that you're seeing those roles pop up within huge companies. So Tangerine just launched an entire uh, line of sponsorship employees direct from like the director level all the way to the analyst level and you're seeing this with huge companies consulting companies are putting in efforts to dig deep into sponsorship and that's because it's such a big area that makes so much money because it's that experiential marketing that we're moving towards and that's another field where a lot of experience is coming in handy these days it's the the media and the the photography the videography 
um, design, all that kind of stuff. A lot of the companies are hiring that in, in-house rather than going out to an agency. So having that creative ability on top will set you apart from just being like an analyst where it's more data focused. And um, another trend that I've been seeing a lot of recently is marketing consultants. Um, it's huge and you're seeing a lot of it happen with companies like even PwC and Deloitte who are posting these rules for marketing consultants. So jumping into um, the strategic side, combining it with marketing, learn your finance. And I feel like the marketer is essentially going to be the next CEO, in my opinion, because it's it knows everything and it's not too careful of spending money like the accountants. Just wink at the accountants and don't be crap. So, yeah, that's my take on marketing. Yeah. And I think I just want to add one last note on that. Um, I think there's a great range and scope as to what kind of roles you can take on. You can be very focused and be very narrowed into, I'm really optimizing this Instagram channel for a brand, or you could be zooming all the way out and saying, okay, I need to get this product global. So I think that also just thinking about the breadth of a role is really different. Um, and that of course varies by company, varies by industry. So there is a lot of flexibility in terms of what your actual job description will look like and how many hats you do have to wear. Um, and I think that that's another great element of marketing where you can have that autonomy to choose whether you want to wear multiple hats or you want to just, you know, this is my hat and that's my hat. So I think that it's, it's a really kind of flexible industry from that perspective as well. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we have another question from Kate. Do you want to just unmute yourself again? Yeah. Uh, thank you for answering the first question. So my next question is, do you know if the strategic management specialization is commonly paired with another specialization? Um, I think if I were to say, is it commonly paired? Commonly might be a lot of people tend to pair with OMIS for whatever reason, but it can be, I think, strategic management is a discipline that encompasses all the different fields of business. So it encompasses the finance side, the marketing side, organizational behaviors, you know, international business if the company is of that nature. So I think it's pretty good to pair not only with other specializations, but if you have it and then you mix and match courses of different specializations. Like I was just thinking about what uh, was said about accidental specializations and I scrolled up here and I'm one credit away from a marketing specialization myself. So we would have had four, <laughs> but yeah. So I say definitely uh, there is good fit and the skills that you learn uh, from the projects that you do in strategic management, they're gonna help you not only in other courses, but also in a lot of like the extracurricular activities that are popular at Schulich, such as case competitions and the like. Thank you, Uday. Um, so if we have no more questions. Uh, I'm just gonna hand it over to Mina to just go over where you can get some more help if you need some, if you have any enrollment questions. Um, just before that, Sam, do you wanna unmute yourself and ask a question? Yeah, um, so I don't know really how to phrase this question exactly, but um, I'm going into my fourth year and I'm specializing in marketing. So I have a few courses left to choose and I'm wondering how necessary um, you guys think it is to take more um, analytical, technical courses. Um, say like, I haven't really done math in over a year and it's not really my thing. Do you think it's really important that I take those courses or not? I can start off. Um, am I leggy or am I clear? You're okay now. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think the last point that you said, you know, the whole math thing uh, was one thing that I picked up on as soon as I finished grade 11. I think it was like advanced functions or grade 12 at whatever the equivalent was. And I realized, oh crap, I math was waiting for me first. And, and um, what type of um, but I think right now, a bit more beneficial, at least in my opinion, for you to take on a little bit more of those analytics-based courses, or you can do your own research and learn it like you would on YouTube, right? Um, because I think like uh, SAS, SQL, Python, um, and having a bit of those sort of backgrounds will definitely help you as a marketer. Um, because like at Bell, for instance, there's some days where I need to get data or I can't really pull it myself because I don't have sometimes the knowledge of like someone that knows how to pull from or a certain table. Um, again, like if I would have known that knowledge myself, I could have expedited the process a lot further. 
So I know like as it might sound a little cliche, but I think it's good to explore your interests and in things that you're sometimes afraid of. Okay. Does anyone else want to add anything? Yeah, I'll jump in as well here. So I, having oh. uh, analytic, analytic based thinking will definitely help you. We missed like 20 seconds there, bro. What was that? Sorry. So we, lo- we, we, we missed the last 20 seconds, if you want to repeat. I honestly, I don't even know what I said, but long story short, don't be afraid to try something that you're, you know, like a little intimidated by only because marketing or rather like a good marketer knows their numbers and knows their execution. Right. So if you have an analytical background, it's only going to help you from the scope of the recommendations you provide, as well as, you know, the output uh, of your work itself, if that helps. Yeah. And what I was going to add is uh, I regret not taking classes like market research or consumer behavior and Shulik as well in my last year, because those are the things that are now the most valuable. So you're, the, the research behind the marketing is where I suck. Absolutely. Because I never learned the skills for it. So that's where I had to start learning how to do some of those things myself. And I totally agree with you, Vaish, where you, I learned how to do some of the math for some of the things I didn't know how to do now in the workplace. And being able to quantify your marketing results is so, so valuable to say, I am able to achieve this for your company and put a dollar amount, a percentage in front of it, put something that is not just what marketers have to say, return an objective, which is, you know, a a way of just lying your way through results. I feel a little bit in marketing. So being able to put numbers and values to your work makes you so much more valuable. So I was scared of math. I hated math all through high school. I run away from Rotman because I thought it was more mathy than anywhere else. So those are the things that in my head were just always like, oh yeah, don't do math. And then I took a VBA class and I'm like, oh, it's not so bad. Then I did the other Ole Miss class and I'm like, oh, I can do this. And then it kind of just rolled in, in your head because the math that you're doing is so logical and it's so real world based that it's understandable and it's doable. It's not grade 12 calculus where you just want to kill yourself because you don't understand a single thing that's going on. So that's my two cents on that one. Yeah, and I think just to wrap up my last point in in terms of kind of my advice on that, like I didn't take any of those very technical courses at Shulik. I did take marketing research on exchange and I found that that was very helpful for me. Um, And I think that's like just that thing where this is like a lot of information for everyone. So don't be overwhelmed that you have to cover like, oh, all these different coding languages, all these different math skills, all these different things. Pick one or two so that when you have an interview, you can sell that specific factor. Like, yes, I know this. That means I can teach myself. That means I know these skills. And if you have ones that are specific to your company, I can learn them. And I think that that's kind of the bottom line, like having something like something to support yourself analytically. Of course, every company is different. So knowing everything is not only unreasonable, but kind of also difficult because you don't necessarily know what everyone's going to be expecting. But having some sort of foundation is always an asset. And I think that finding the one that most interests you, kind of what's been said before, is probably your best key to success in that aspect for sure. I hope they answered your question, Sam. Um, and with that, it is 7.34. I, I am going to wrap this up. So if you do have questions about enrollment, please do not hesitate to email undergrad at shulik.yorku.ca. Um, you can reach out to either Luba, who's our new director of the FDS, or Mariana, who is your advisor. Those of you who um, had Kathleen this past year, um, unfortunately, her contract has ended at Shulik, but Rohini will be back very shortly and then you will have two advisors to work with so please don't wait until September to look into your graduation requirements if you are in fourth year Uh, enrollment for a lot of you will start on Monday so please please send emails if you have questions Uh, they will get back to you as soon as possible and with that thank you so much to our four analysts for coming out and thank you so much to all of you for taking this time on a Friday evening not that we have some place to be but it's still really nice of you to come out we hope you found this useful we'll be sending out a feedback form so if you could fill that out and send it back to us it'll help us with our future online events as well so thank you so much for joining us